Hey folks, it's Andrew Kilpatrick here, and today I'd like to tell you about the Carbon Screen Display. And this will feature only the different sections on the screen and not go into really any detail of the various menus and things. But because the screen display is the sort of central aspect of Carbon and how you interact with it, I thought it was important to go over the various parts of the screen and the different information that you can get from there. Okay, so the four sections of the screen are the top bar, the track display, the track preview displays, and the track status or menu display depending on what mode you're in. So let's go over each of those sections and we'll go over all the different things that are shown in each section. So on the top bar we have three rows of text. The top row has the song name, so that's the current song that's loaded Right in the middle of the top row is the tempo display in beats per minute. And then on the right hand side is shown the current scene. There are six scenes that you can use. On the second row we have the run stop indicator and the record indicator. These will turn a, a lighter color or a brighter color of green or red respectively to show whether those modes are active or not. In the middle the word int uh, shows that we're using the internal MIDI clock. If you have carbon synced to an external MIDI clock, then this will say ext. KB uh, is for the uh, keyboard transposition. So if you're using a keyboard to transpose voice tracks up and down, this will show the current transposition amount in semitones. And then on the right hand side, live, will go a brighter shade of blue to show that you're in the live mode where you've taken over the current track or tracks and you're playing them live from a keyboard. And then on the third row is the song mode uh, display and that shows which slot in the song mode you're playing and counts off the beats and so on to show you that it's currently playing back from the song mode. The track display shows the first of any track or tracks that you have selected and shows the step position, it shows the length of the sequence. So for instance, if you have 16 steps selected, it will show those. Whatever range of notes or range of steps that you have selected. It also shows the gate pattern. And it shows whether you have data recorded into the step or not. So if you turn this all the way up, you can see that these steps go black, indicating that there aren't any notes recorded in there. The track preview displays show the same information as the track display, but it shows all six tracks at the same time. So as you switch tracks, you can see that the current track is, or tracks, are highlighted with a small bar under the preview display for each track. There's another yellow bar under that, which shows the uh, status of the arpeggiator. So if an arpeggiator is on on a track, it will show the yellow bar lit up. And the last section is the track status or menu display that's shown at the bottom of the screen. There are four lines of text. And normally those show the status of the current track or the first of multiple selected tracks. And most of the information about the track is shown there. For instance, if we go along each uh, line, it shows the track number. The little arrow with the X beside it shows whether or not you have a bias track enabled that X will be the number of another track if you've selected a bias track to transpose this track. On or mute shows the current mute status of the track. The current track transposition is shown on the first line near the right hand side. Uh, the start and length of the track, which steps are selected as the start and how many steps are selected. The direction of the track, if, you, if it's running in forward or reverse. The step length, so this is running in 16th notes. The gate length override, so normally the gates are 100% which means that they play the length of the note that was originally recorded. Um, but you can also override that to make notes longer or shorter. Uh, on the lowest line we see the tonality, this is the scale quantizing mode that's currently running. And we also see on the right hand side it says voice right now. That uh, has to do with a little bit about how recording works, but also it mostly has to do with when you transpose tracks using the keyboard transpose mode, voice tracks will transpose 
and drum tracks won't transpose. So the menu display takes over the track status display when you're in a menu. So let me give you an example of how that works. Those four lines of text, if I go into the MIDI menu for instance, will show the MIDI settings for track one, and we can use the select encoder to adjust the parameter that we're looking at or editing, and we can use the value encoder to change the value of the current parameter. If we want to get out of the current menu and go back to the track status display, we can either wait for a configurable timeout, or we can double tap the shift key and it will go back to the track status display. So that's pretty much it for the screen display in Carbon. I hope that that shed some light on some of the details, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.